Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for joining. My name is Mikhailo Oleksienko. You can see the uh, my last name on the below me. Hello, everyone. We are starting the Chasable classroom, and uh, we would be discussing the final day of the Chasable Masters. Um, uh, the Wesley so won it. Not confidently, I would say, the last game he could have lost, although he did deserve uh, some wins earlier in the match. So um, we're going to be hour, hour and a half, maybe, maybe even longer, depending how much time it takes. So we are going to be doing the class. Uh, hello, everyone. Please join. And uh, yes, everyone is muted. I can see some of the students joining this video. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, we will be also, you can win some prizes. Uh, the prizes would be, uh, well, I, I'll give some quizzes and I would, before giving the quiz, I would say the first one uh, to, to, to solve the puzzle uh, gets like a mug or a shirt and I, I would let you know, all, uh, let you all know beforehand. And uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, game one. So, uh, ah, I forgot to mention that I'm one of the authors of... Uh, uh, for Chasable, and I have two courses, about one about initiative, another one about tactics. Uh, by the way, that one would be uh, one of the prizes today. Uh, so uh, try to stay engaged. Uh, all right, mm, game one uh, was, uh, let's see, game one between Lequan Gliam and Wesley So, played today, just a couple hours ago, uh, the first day uh, of the final was yesterday, and Wesley won uh, two and a half to half. So he won day one. All he needed in day two is to not lose the match. And uh, here we go. Game one. Black one, Gliam is white. Wesley saw had black pieces. So d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, and bishop f4. So Le was choosing... Oh, well, in this case, this is a London system. In another game, he actually played the move e3. And against Aronian, he, he won games like that. Uh, uh, how do I say it right? Not the most principled uh, approach. Not the most uh, uh, aggressive one. So he just wants to play. Just say, let's, let's play some chess. London system, it is. So, and now c5, very principled line. e3 and knight c6. Quick development for black. Knight bd2. Knight pd2. Yes, uh, whoever's watching, you're welcome to, to join the classroom uh, the, uh, who's watching on Twitch or YouTube. Um, on Twitch, there's a link. You can join the classroom. I think it's up to 40 or maybe 50 uh, people can participate. And we're. you can win a mug, you can win a course, you can win a shirt and maybe some socks. I think that's the full list of prizes today. All right. So queen b6. Queen b6. Yeah, that's often the case when, when you develop the bishop in London system or in any other opening. When you develop the bishop, the pawn on b2 is vulnerable. There's no piece to defend it. That's why queen b6 is a good move. And now we're going into a very, very difficult territory, I would say. Uh, very sharp. d takes c5, queen takes b2, rook b1 with the tempo, queen c3, very, very unclear position. So white ruined the pawn structure. So we have one pawn island. This is the second pawn island. Um, uh, by the way, you're welcome to, um, uh, to use the chat to ask questions here in, in the classroom, uh, uh, here at Chasable. And um, a pawn island is, I, I don't know exact definition, but basically if there's an open file, you draw straight lines there. And how many pawn islands do you have? The A2 pawn has no pawn next to it. That's one island. C2, C5, another island, and four other pawns are there as well. So white pawn structure is very fractured. However, white is much better developed. Knight, knight, bishop, and rook are already developed. Four pieces out in the game, and black has only three pieces. Only three pieces developed, and one of them is the queen. That's not, not a good place to be, to develop the queen too early. But this is modern, precise chess. So the game continued, bishop to b5. Another piece comes to play. So white is significantly ahead in development. That's why uh, Saw so plays g6 to prepare the development of the bishop and castle quickly. So... Uh, and white hits the center. So play, so play this. So I remind you that uh, Wesley Saw has black pieces here, game one of the second day. And uh, he played it before. He actually played it against Levon Aronian. 
a couple of months ago in April on another online tournament organized by Chess24 group. And uh, he lost it, actually. He lost it. Uh, that game went E4. So this is very, very difficult stuff. It's all stockfish supported analysis. But I would explain you from, from human point of view uh, is that uh, white is the head of, in development. So white wants to open up the position. That's like the, the vague point. That's why this move makes sense. Uh, in that game that uh, Wesley played against the key, he played bishop g7 and after bishop e5, another move with a nice move with a tempo using the pin. So the knight cannot capture and the queen has to go. He got in trouble and lost. So that is his improvement, d takes e4. And now both players started blitzing out moves. Blitzing out moves, uh, oh, okay, they didn't start. They started blitzing out moves from the very beginning. So bishop to e5 with a tempo. Queen to, goes to a5, white castles. This is amazing, like very weird position. White has one, two, three, four, five pieces developed and king is safe. Black has two pieces developed and the queen, but black can take the full knight. E takes f3, bishop takes c6, pawn takes c6, queen takes f3. White is full piece down. And yet this is modern chess. This is objectively a playable line for both sides. Why on earth white can afford to do that? to give up a piece in the opening for no apparent reason. Uh, the idea is that white's attacking right now. The pawn on c6 is hanging. The knight on f6 is hanging. Black doesn't have time to defend the pawn with some passive moves. So Wesley blitz out this move, knight to d5. Black Van Gliem takes the rook. Now white is ahead in, in my material. Like very, very difficult position. Queen d2, black says, nope, I have two pieces for a rook. And c4. Le Quanglier goes, I'm attacking the knight. You cannot leave. You just, you shall not, no, shall not pass. That's a different reference. The, the knight cannot move. The knight cannot move because queen takes c6 is coming. But uh, f6 blitzed out by Wesley. That was still his preparation. So uh, that is still his preparation. The idea of f6 move is to uh, close the cage for this guy on h8 so that it cannot leave and black will slowly win it uh, win it soon so white and now uh like one gliam he was on his own based on the time he spent on the moves and uh, and now he played rook f to e1 that was not a good move that move is too slow uh, there was one game in database for this position i was surprised because this is com almost completely new territory uh, that game when c takes d5 queen takes d5 and if you count the pieces white has a uh, rook for the bishop and the pawn, right? So exchange for a pawn. And yet the bishop on h8 is stuck. That's why black is certainly not lost here. And well, Stockfish's choice is rook f to d1 with a tempo. And uh, another reason why, why I did my courses for Chessable, uh, the World Chess, World Champions Blunder and the course on initiative is that I actually extracted lots of knowledge from analyzing for years with Stockfish. And um, what I realized, what Stockfish is very often doing, playing active, forcing, attacking moves almost all the time. So move like rook f to e1, it just develops the rook, it just develops the rook. So the knight still cannot leave, but it doesn't create a major threat. So black has a lot of time to decide what to do. Uh, rook f d1, forcing move. And the line goes, uh, yes, this is engine calculation. So why does bishop not f6 not work instead of rook f to e1? Uh, bishop f6, uh, black takes with a pawn, takes with a pawn and not opening that diagonal. So bishop takes f6 doesn't work yet. So uh, rook fd1 was uh, was the, uh, well, why would, uh, and then you take on d5, uh, says Kramnik student. Uh, why do you give up the bishop then? Take uh, take the, the knight first and then figure out what to do. Uh, so uh, the right move was rook f to d1. Ah, okay, bishop f6, c takes f6, c takes d5. And the point being that queen f6 is the next move. Actually, not a bad point. Although I wouldn't be surprised if that's the correct move. Knight takes f6, queen c6, king f7, queen a8. Black has three minor pieces. You never know when, okay, here there's a very strong fast pawn. So I actually didn't check bishop f6. That seems like a very reasonable uh, move to consider now, now that I look at it. Takes, takes, now queen f6, that, that looks quite reasonable to me. I don't have an immediate uh, uh, refutation to it. Let's say queen d5, queen f6, my king is indeed in trouble. Indeed in trouble, maybe I've even lost here, bishop e7, rook e1, queen d7, 
and rook d1 or maybe queen d8 but that's too passive yeah I actually like bishop f6 move uh it was uh i didn't analyze it so i don't have a definite uh yes or no maybe black doesn't capture maybe black goes queen f4 exchanging pieces that could also be a weird reason so but uh, the, the line I wanted to show you was this one, rook f to d1, way forcing. Oh, okay, another thing. In, in my course about tactics, I think that's in tactics, yeah. Uh, I'm discussing the different degrees uh, of how the move could be forcing, right? Uh, so there are lots of forcing moves, lots of forcing moves very often in such positions, right? So you have rook d1, rook d1, c takes d5, bishop f6. That's just four already. Maybe Maybe I missed another decent forcing move. How do you not get lost in this uh, um, tree of variations? How do you not like, oh my God, what's the priority? So, and in that course, I'm discussing that the priority of the calculation should be the most forcing moves should be considered first. The most forcing move in this position, in my view, is rook f to d1, because you're threatening a full queen. The second, okay, or rook b to d1, but that doesn't make sense. The rook is well placed on the b file. So I would reject that based on that. And then C takes D5 should be the move, take the knight and then takes the pawn. This is very uh, little threat compared to the other ones. So that should be the priority of one's calculation in my estimation. So rook FD1, black would move the queen, C takes D5, queen's exchange. I'm sure this was all uh, Wesley's preparation because he blitzed out all the moves until F6. The position is far from clear. Anyways, let's come back to the game. So this was the position in the game and Lech Van Gliem played rook to e one and now Wesley played a series of very good moves and got big advantage. And then unfortunately for him, he lost this first game of the match, even though he fully deserved to win this one. So clearly there's the F6 problem. That's why I played Rook to E1. So uh, hold on a second. When is the quiz coming? Oh, the, soon, soon you'll have the first quiz. Okay, so he went King F7. King F7, the king is nice and secure. There's no more bishop F6. The bishop is stuck on H8 forever. So I took on D5 and black took with the queen. Black says, yeah, let's remove the queens. And then I'm going to win your bishop eventually, maybe with king G8, maybe slowly just move the bishop with another bishop and then take with the rook. That bishop is, in going, is not going anywhere. So white naturally tries to keep the queens on the board. And now Wesley develops the bishop. So all great moves. So, and now queen E3. Uh, move played by Alec Wang Liam. And um, he, uh, the first quest, so the game continued with Bishop F5, which was not an accurate move. Uh, not the best, let's put it this way. So the correct move in this position was uh, to go Queen F5 and then put a monster Bishop on D5. Look at that Bishop. Like imagine that Bishop on D5. Imagine that bishop on d5. That's an amazing piece. It covers the d-file. Uh, it uh, attacks the king. It blocks the, uh, this diagonal. Amazing. So once black puts the bishop on d5, white would be busted. So probably white would have to play something like rook b7 and bishop d5 doesn't work because after rook, uh, rook 2 it takes e7. Although I don't have to capture, I can still go king g8. But black doesn't have to go bishop d5. Black can keep that option and instead do something else. For example, I don't prophylactic move like rook e8. So queen f5 was the correct move, and Wesley would have had a great, great position and huge advantage. And I, when I looked at this position, I asked myself, why not queen d7? Why would you let the rook to b7 if you can go queen to d7? Uh, so that was, my, uh, that was my question. That was my question. And uh, that would be the quiz number one. There you go. The price would be a pair of socks. A pair of socks. The first one to get it right is uh, thirty more seconds. Thirty more seconds. Best move for white and a variation. So a quiz usually is not one move, it's a sequence of moves. 10, 9, 9, ah, okay. 6, 5, 4, almost there. Let's see the results. Let me see the results. Uh, apparently the, uh, the nickname J and Zach, J and Zach was the first one to get this one right. 
and uh, he gets a pair of socks. J N Big Z Zap S Z A C H. Okay, so the quiz was the solution was rook to b7 and uh, queen takes b7 and now queen e6. I stopped it here because the only move is king e8 and now there are plenty of winning options, but the main one would be something like bishop to f6. The bishop escaped and I told you it wouldn't escape. Yeah, so uh, the answer doesn't work if you put it in the chat. So it's only for, for those attending the classroom. They can, they can try guessing uh, the moves. All right. So instead, after queen e3, so socks done, a few more uh, for more, uh, and this was not a too sophisticated one. Most of the, uh, most of the players have, uh, have got it. So let's see what happened next. Bishop went to f5. And now white played a very nice move, rook bd1, attacking the queen. And white sees the initiative. So queen took the pawn, but we're not playing in pawns anymore. It's not about the pawns. It's not about the pawns anymore. White is attacking. So white played h3 move. Uh, well, you, you don't want to have a back rank problem. And g4 is very nasty threat. Where would this bishop go? There's, okay, it can try to go to, to d5, but uh, well, Wesley started, hold on a second. Bishop e6, rook d2 could be the problem. Why didn't he play bishop e6? Uh, maybe white has a repetition. Yeah, maybe I might have rook d2, rook b3, at least a repetition for white. So he played h5 and white played queen f3, insisting on the move uh, g4. So uh, Wesley played king g8, another very logical move. g4, h takes g4, forcing moves, h takes g4, bishop c2, forcing moves. This is the way you should be playing. And this, these are the kinds of things. Uh, okay, this is not about tactics. It was my in my initiative course. Forcing moves should be first. For example, bishop c2 was... Uh, 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 the only move for black. Otherwise, uh, uh, white would take, for example, on c6. So now the game continued with rook to d7. Very, very sharp position. And, uh, well, let me see, let me see. I have many more quizzes to go. I don't want to give up all the, uh, all the presents yet. So it was very difficult. And Wesley played a supernatural move. Super Come, no, not supernatural, but very natural move. He just took the bishop on h8. He just took the bishop. Uh, how can you not take that bishop? Well, um, apparently some other moves needed to be played, but this is rocket science, to be honest. This is really, really difficult. Uh, the, the One of the moves was just go rook b8, just finally develop the rook. Is it obvious? No, it's not obvious. But uh, in my initiative course, I'm discussing that in such positions, this is very sharp, open, dynamic positions. The, the first thing you should always consider is forcing moves, which is certainly taking the bishop as a forcing move. And um, I call it good looking forcing moves. And uh, that's pretty much, uh, this is far more complicated than rocket science. <laughs> yeah, I never studied rocket science. I studied mathematics, but uh, I was told it is difficult. Uh, okay. Um, so forcing moves should be the priority. King h8. And actually, I don't see any other good looking forcing move for black. Uh, hardly queen a5 is good looking. Uh, it's, I don't think it's good looking. Just I want to take on e7 anyway. So it's only one good looking forcing move. And if you calculate it, apparently white is winning here. And then you know, the next priority should be, if you're not happy with a forcing move, you should say, okay, then I need to improve my position, particularly one of my bad pieces right this second. That's, that's my algorithm that I'm suggesting in, in my course about initiative. So, and it, and it works. It works almost all the time. It's never 100%. Any, none of the rules or guidelines in chess are 100% accurate, but I would say 90% accuracy, um, at least, uh, or maybe more. I didn't do a full research, but uh, I extracted these ideas and knowledge not by, oh, I feel like this is the right thing to do. No, I've analyzed a lot of positions with Stockfish, which is clearly the best engine in the world. Uh, we, uh, nobody stands a chance as a human being. I think uh, my phone can beat uh, even world champions. So like th these are like Ferrari and Usain Bolt. So different categories at this point. So, you, but you can really extract human lessons from analyzing with Stockfish if uh, if you know what you're doing. So, and uh, so if forcing move doesn't work, which is the case here, 
improve one of your pieces a lot. And that's Rook B8 definitely does that. If you want to improve the rook, you're not, <laughs> rook c8, rook e8 is not improving the rook. So rook b8 improves the piece, and apparently this is working. And the fight goes rook e7, bishop e7, rook takes e7, trying to get to that king. Black plays accurate move, queen b5, and then rook b1 check would be coming, and white has to exchange queens, and after bishop f6, uh, white is still pressing, but black can hold here. So that was one of the moves. The position is really, really difficult. So in rapid chess, it's almost impossible to see all of it. In rapid chess, the one who's attacking the king uh, usually wins. The one who's attacking the king usually wins. So because it's super hard to, uh, uh, to defend, attacking is so much easier. Another move that, uh, that was correct was queen c4, which I don't really understand this move. Uh, well, you can say it's improving the queen. It's uh, putting pressure here and here, but I would rather move the rook. And the line goes rook e7, bishop e7, rook takes e7, and now rook d8 developing the rook. And somehow, ah, yes, the idea is that after queen f6, almost checkmate, black has a perpetual after queen to g4. So this is difficult stuff, but the main thing, forcing moves first or improve one of your pieces. And that seems to be working in this particular position as well. So the game continued king h8. And now Le played rook takes e7, but queen a1 check to, to defend the pawn on f6. He just moved the king to h2. And now capturing is bad because after recapture, uh, there's no good defense from queen h3, queen h7 mate. I think that's what he, uh, he may have overlooked. And uh, so the game continued with g5. g5, just to cover up the h7 square and uh, the bishop comes in to, to help the king. So uh, Liam did, uh, continued with forcing moves, take the pawn, attack the rook, and rook went to b8, and uh, rook went to b8, and now it was uh, Le's turn to, uh, to make an, an inaccuracy, and uh, so this one, uh, hold on one second. I'm, I'm new to this, uh, uh, I'm new to this, uh, um, to the platform. So apologies for technical difficulties. So quiz number two uh, for today and uh, whoever guesses uh, would get, let me see, let me see, a mug. So the quiz starts right now, best move for white and uh, start the quiz. Starting the quiz, you have a lot of time. Don't act too quickly. Don't click the first move that comes to mind. Uh, take your time to somehow you need to get to, to the king on h8. How can you do that? The king on h8 is the main problem in black's position. The main problem is black's position, but uh, the move is not, uh, not easy. Uh, to find, I would say. Hmm. Yeah, the first one too. Uh, ah, okay. And uh, the same, the same uh, nickname cannot win two prizes. Uh, uh, I should have said that in advance. My apologies. My apologies. So. 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds. Okay, and the price goes to, uh, okay, the nickname is uh, Poopy69. I don't like the, this nickname. P-O-O-P-Y-69. Uh, that's the, the correct move was Rook back 
to e3 i think this is unbelievably difficult move i don't know how you came up with it maybe maybe uh, somebody was watching the live stream and uh, noticed that stockfish is saying it because these moves are really really hard to uh, to spot really difficult to spot the idea it's actually rook h3 check and the king would have to go to g8 and then queen e6 or queen d5 would lead to immediate checkmate and there's nothing black can do about that backward moves are really 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 difficult to spot really difficult so congratulations to poopy69 for getting the mug okay instead the game continued with very natural move queen c7 how can you blame uh, uh Lequang Liam for playing such a natural move it is a mate in three threat so if black skips the move white would go rook h7 check if bishop takes h7 let's say skipping a move i'm not gonna skip a move let me put the rook to b1 just for argument's sake just the rook moves with threatening some checks black white goes rook h7 if bishop takes h7 rook takes h7 king g8 and balaboom mate so that's why queen c7 and if rook b1 rook h7 king g8 another rook comes to g7 basically three heavy pieces are crushing the king so the move is very very natural and also the rook is hanging so it looks like that's it it looks like game over to be honest and my guess is that wesley had had this uh, thought in his mind as well because this looks completely lost there's no checks for the king the diagonal is completely under control mate in three is coming what do you do queen b1 very good move found uh, wesley found so he defends the rook and there's no rook h7 check because now black has two pieces controlling the square uh and uh, la continued with a very very natural move rook d8 so threatened the rook and and the back rank seems to be collapsing so apparently this is a mistake but uh, the winning move is rook e6 i'm looking at this move and i don't get it i look again and i don't understand why this is winning i do not understand why this move is winning why why is it winning it's like a threat to take a pawn and then still there's no mate i i it's just apparently black can do much and white is dominating so but this is rocket science again so rook uh, to d8 was played by uh uh by la and now wesley made a big mistake he had two minutes on his clock so uh, uh this quiz would not have any prizes i would give you a minute one minute i'm setting uh, one minute for the clock All right, uh, I'll gonna, I'm going to give you one and a half minutes because this is not an easy one. Find a way to survive for black that Wesley saw did not manage. And uh, a little hint that I want uh, uh, to give you is uh, whenever there's a threat, so there's no checkmate threat yet, right? So if black does nothing, there's no immediate mate. The threat is to win the rook and then give a checkmate. It gives black time to do something all on his own so uh on his own even if there's a big threat aimed at you try to see whether maybe you can create a threat of your own oh uh, maybe i should have given the prizes this was not an easy one but yeah i can't change the rules as as we go 40 seconds 40 seconds, very, very difficult stuff. Yeah, in Twitch chat, you can see the link to, to one of my courses, World Champions Blunder. And uh, I have another one about initiative. Both of them seem to be representing what was happening in this game and, uh, and in other games. Ah, what must we do to redeem a price? Yes, the moderators will contact you. All right. So the price goes to 
Kerago, K-E-R-A-G-O, Kerago. The solution is not, not simple. The solution is not simple. Check this out. Queen to F1, attacking the, the only undefended piece, not only, okay, the pawn on G4 was also hanging. Before trying go, going all defensive, you think maybe, uh, maybe I can create a threat of my own. And that's a big threat to give a check and deliver a perpetual. And once you realize that after rook d8, uh, sorry, rook d8 here, there is no checkmate threat. It gives you two moves, right? You have move number one, then white takes the rook, then you have second move. And only then you get checkmated. You can do a lot of harm in two moves. So queen f1 was a way to survive for Wesley, surprising way. He had two minutes and he spent a few seconds on his, on his move and immediately resigned after that. Because that's not easy thing to spot. You have to realize that checkmate is not coming. And the line goes like this, queen takes b8, queen f2 check. So king h1 just leads to repetition. So king goes to h3. And now uh, the correct way is queen f3 check. And so if king goes down, it's a repetition. So queen g3, and now the repetition goes like this, queen h1 and queen f3. And that's it. That would be a draw for Wesley. Instead, he took the rook and after queen takes king g8, and after very logical move, rook to e8, he resigned, having two minutes on his clock. And this is uh, something that I want to recommend to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, that's what I recommend to my students very often. It is worth spending a lot of time on a move if you think that you're going to lose, which was clearly the case in Wesley's situation. Uh, it feels to me that he thought he was losing. So in that situation, you can spend all your time because what's going to happen? You're going to lose anyway. Um, you're going to lose anyway. So spend more time when you think that you're losing and spend more time when you think that you're winning. Because if you're right, uh, you get to enjoy a nice win. But if you're wrong, the whole game starts over. The whole game starts over. All right. So that was game number one that Wesley saw lost. I'm going to reset the position. And and upload second game. All right. All right, game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So they change colors, of course. So Wesley has uh, white pieces. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop goes to b5. Ruy Lopez, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop c5, c3, and b5. Quite popular line these days on top level. Bishop back to c2. So white tries to sort of win the tempo. White tries to win a tempo uh, because very often bishop goes to b3 and then it's attacked and goes to c2. And the pawn on e4 needs protection. So d5, d4, this is all theoretical position. d takes e4, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d takes c5. Some changes happened in the, in the center, but this is all theory. So... Uh, what do we have here? We have white has two bishops, right? Uh, but black has a very nice central pawn on e4 and white has doubled pawns, which, which very often is a liability and there's a very weak square on d3. So the position is about equal, but uh, the better player wins. The better player wins, that's, uh, that's why I like, uh, I like this line for white. So the game continued with queen e7, bishop g5 developing the bishop and bishop to b7. Uh, they both blitzed out until here. Uh, although, no, they st uh, I think uh, uh, Wesley tried try to recall the line and he played knight to d2, which is an official novelty. Knight d2 and long castles. Very, very sharp position. Queen e2 and now knight goes to d3 and a4. So they blitzed out until here, more or less blitzed out. And it seems to me that they both knew what was happening here. Uh, we're way beyond the novelty. Novelty happened on knight d2, which was two moves ago. So the a4 is a very natural move. White wants to open the a file. So queen e5 attacks the bishop. Uh, white went bishop to e3. And uh, mm -hmm -hmm. let's see. 
Yeah. Okay, I wanted to do a quiz here, but this is very, very difficult. Although I would do a, a, a quiz here. You can start thinking already. There are no prizes for this quiz. Uh, and I'll give 30 seconds. Uh, the idea is uh, how can you attack? So white is clearly launching an attack on the queen side. Uh, defending is usually a bad idea. Defending is usually a bad idea. You should counterattack. How can black counterattack? in this position. All right. All right, uh, there are a couple of uh, correct answers. The, the correct way to go for black was to go H5 exclamation mark. The knight is going to g4. Black is launching the king side attack. And uh, I didn't check this one, but apparently if you go h3, the knight goes can go to g4 anyway. And if you take its takes, the mate is coming. And if queen takes g4, it's uh, f5. And it seems the attack is overwhelming. Uh, so that's why he didn't play h3. He said, okay, you're giving me a checkmate. I'm giving you the checkmate. Knight takes G, knight to g4, g3, defending from a checkmate. Knight takes bishop, pawn takes a6, knight takes another bishop. Like lots of captures happened. A takes b7, king to b7. Okay, so another thing that uh, I'm discussing uh, in my uh, um, course about initiative on chessable is go something like this. Uh, if you see in a position three, good looking for sync moves three good looking this is what i've observed in vast majority of cases if you see three good looking for sync moves then in most cases you don't have to look for other candidates one of those moves has to be the one it's super unlikely that you have three great moves and uh, none of them are good it's uh, very very rare so in this case the uh, good looking moves for white would be knight to c4 attacking the queen and getting the knight closer to the um, to the to the king and attacking this knight uh, another good move for white would be uh, let me remove the circles uh, rook a5 uh, because the rook is hanging and rook a5 is a great move because c6 is a huge threat now winning the queen so i'm going to put it rook a5 forcing move creates an immediate threat of winning the queen and then rook takes e5. Knight to c4, more natural, I would say, forcing move, attacks the queen, attacks the knight, threatens a check. And the third move, that's the one that Wesley played, was c6. You, you drop a pawn, you lure the king closer to, uh, to where, uh, where it uh, doesn't want to go. Uh, the stockfish is not a big fan of this move, but uh, I, I like the idea. So in this case, the three best options in the position were the ones that I just drew. drew. Forcing, forcing, and forcing. You should not look for anything else. No quiet move, no. So after king c6, now the, the reason to lure the king was to go knight c4, attacks the queen, the queen moves to d5. Knight a5, deliver a check, the king runs away, and white takes the knight. So that's very understandable. White wanted to take the knight, although I cannot really understand why didn't he want to do it like this, knight c4 and queen c5 knight a5 and now queen c2 maybe he found some subtle differences that uh, i did not observe anyways the game continued c6 king c6 knight c4 queen d5 queen knight takes a knight to a5 check king d7 and queen takes c2 and uh, now another thing that uh, that i want to mention remember in the previous game where uh, Wesley played a big mistake, King takes h8. He played a forcing move, which led to a losing position. Uh, the correct move was to improve your piece. So uh, something similar is happening right here. Something very, very similar is happening right here. It's black to move. So maybe I flip the board. Uh, maybe it would be easier uh, to see. Uh, so uh, yes, he played a forcing move, rook a8. That's a forcing move, attacking the knight, yes? and. Uh, that's it. I don't see any other forcing move. I'm looking, I don't see one. I do, oh, good looking forcing move. Knight one is a forcing move. I'm not talking about silly forcing moves. I'm talking about uh, good looking ones. Rook eight is a good looking forcing move, but it's only one. 
So it doesn't mean it's the best. If there were three, yes, you would have to choose one of them in most cases. But uh, Rook A8 is a mistake. White seizes the initiative with a nice move. Uh, we'll, we'll see that in a second. If a forcing move is not, uh, you're not happy with the forcing move, then the next question would be, how do I improve my bad piece right now? How do I improve one of my bad pieces right now? When I look at Black's pieces, the knight is awesome, the queen is awesome, rook on d8 could be better, uh, but uh, not bad. The Which piece is bad? Rook on h8 is bad. The rook on h8 is bad. The two best moves in the position are h4, including the rook in the game. I wouldn't call it forcing, it's definitely creating some threats, but uh, h takes g3, f takes g3, I don't see an immediate win. That's why I don't think it qualifies to be called the forcing one, but clearly creating uh, uh, threats. Uh, isn't the king on d7 even worse? No, I'm talking about the pieces. Although is, the, is king a piece? I think it is a piece. Well, I'm talking about the pieces that you can give checks with. I'm not talking about the king or pawns. I'm talking about uh, queens, rooks, and knights, and bishops. So uh, h4 was the great move in the position, or rook to h6, and try to, to move the rook down the sixth rank, closer to the king, and include it into the game. Those were the better options. Improve your worst place piece. That's always a useful uh, thing to... Uh, to be crossing your mind uh, whenever you are playing a chess game. Instead, Wesley played the forcing move rook a8, and I'm gonna flip the board back because now it was, uh, oh no, sorry, Wesley had white pieces here. My apologies. Uh, Wesley had white pieces in this game. Sorry, so Wesley's, now it's Wesley's turn to seize the initiative. Whenever you see a threat, just clearly rook takes a5 as a big threat, you should acknowledge the threat, say, okay, my knight is hanging. But then you should fight this instinct. Uh, I have it myself. I, uh, I have it myself. The instinct is, oh, I need to defend B4. Oh, I need to defend it. Try fighting that instinct and try creating a threat of your own. In this case, I would look at check, queen A4 check, or a much better move that Wesley played, rook to A4. So black says, yeah, you can take my knight. And of course, if black takes the knight, it goes rook D4 boom winning the queen so before going all defensive look for uh, threats of your own rook a4 is a big threat and improves the rook and so um uh, uh, move ran away with the king to c8 and now knight went to c4 uh, that square was not available for the knight now it is and uh, h4 played by la finally improving the rook the problem is white is now White threats are bigger. White played queen b3, another forcing move. Knight b6 is a big threat. So no tempo is being lost. Uh, king d8, the poor king runs away. White includes the final piece in the game. Rook f2, a1, forcing move. Rook takes a4, queen takes a4, also a forcing move. Well, captures are always forcing. But uh, yes, it's a very, very sharp game, dart ball. Uh, the capture even is even more forcing because queen a8 is immediate win threat. Queen a8, black would have to take queen a8, rook takes a8, and uh, the rook on h8 says goodbye. And now again, this was it was really really difficult game. But remember how in in the previous game Wesley could have survived by attacking the f2 pawn. Remember, f2 pawn is always vulnerable because usually it's the king who's defending it. So here. Uh, La had a chance to survive. There is a threat, so he dealt with the threat by running away with the king. That's not a forcing move for black. Whatever the threat is, your first intention should be, what do I, what I can do? What threat can I create? Queen to f5 was the correct move. Attacking the pawn. And for example, if white goes queen a8, the king simply goes to e7. Queen takes h8, queen takes f2, king h1, queen f3 leads to a perpetual. Leads to a perpetual. So always attack first. Always, always attack first. Kramnik student says, I understand the game better with such analysis and live commentary. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, uh, and on queen f5, if white wanted to continue, white would have to play queen a7. But it gives black time to breathe. Black has uh, luxury to do whatever because there is no threat. There's no more threat. Queen b8 is still not a threat. Black, and black has a lot of moves available. So that's why forcing moves should be the priority. Instead, Le, uh, went king e7, and now it was Wesley's turn to, to hit it with forcing moves. Knight e3, attack the queen. 
So the queen goes to e6. Black has no forcing move with the queen anymore. Uh, queen, uh, the pawn on e4 needs protection. So queen went to e6. Another forcing move, queen d4, attacking the pawn. There were better options, but this is pretty good. People always collapse under pressure. If you keep creating threats with every move, at some point your opponent would miss one. That's exactly what happened. So here black could have played queen e5 and sort of still keep it together. Or uh, create a counter threat with rook to b8. So if queen g7, uh, black takes the pawn on b2, sort of uh, mm, uh, activating the rook. The position remains unclear, but white is the one attacking now. Queen d4, he played this for simple rook d8, but white wanted to go to g7 anyways. And now it has a big advantage, which turns into a winning one very shortly. Knight goes to e5. So Lay is trying to create some counterplay with knight f3. That looks quite dangerous. Queen h3 coming. Uh, queen g5 check, another forcing move, king e8. Queen h5, not a forcing move. So I think here the king g2 was an accurate move. I don't, the position is so complex that I'm gonna only skip to, to a critical moment. Queen h5, why did he play this move? I don't know. I don't like it that much. I don't understand what this move is accomplishing. Queen h8 check, so what? Knight is coming to, uh, yeah, okay, knight f3 was a big threat, of course. Knight f3, fork is coming. Uh, so he just moved the queen, but yeah, it was not the best move. Queen h5, h3, and now it was time. Now he went, h3 was, I think, inaccuracy. Knight f5, creating a threat of a fork, or queen h8, and then rook d1. Looks like a win to me. Knight f3 check, king goes to h1. Queen runs to b3. Black's pieces are all over the place, although mate, mate is coming, so black still has to be careful. Queen h8, forcing move, king d7, queen takes h3, forcing move, and because the king just blocked the rook, the king just blocked the rook for a second, so white has time to capture. If that rook could jump over, or then black would even go queen d1, that would still be a nice win. Queen d1, rook d1, rook takes d1, king g2, rook g1, nice checkmate, but the king is blocking the rook, and white is completely winning now. Queen takes b2, and now another forcing move, rook d1 check, King c6, queen h6 check. I think this, this check that uh, Lea could have overlooked because the idea was if rook takes, this is checkmate. Uh, that's it, the king is busted. King g2, queen g1 checkmate. Obviously they both saw it, but white has an intermediate check, queen h6, king b7 and rook d8. And after checking g2, the king could run away and the queen is protected. Check this out, queen g1, king h3. If queen went to h2, king g4, uh, there's maybe one more check on e5. It doesn't bring much. And the queen is defended. So that was a winning continuation. Rook d1, uh, king c6, queen h6, king d8, rook takes d8, queen b1 check, king g2, queen g1, king h3, and now queen takes f2. Uh, I think that was desperation, but you had to continue. There are some practical chances here. And, uh, uh, and Wesley, almost any move is winning here for one simple reason. If you ask the right question, I think. The question should be, what is the threat? So uh, I don't like passive chess, as you may have noticed. I like attacking and playing forcing moves. But sometimes you have to ask this question. What is the threat? What is the threat? What does my opponent want? If I skip a move, if I do nothing, what is happening? Queen h2, it was not a threat. I'm still running away. Okay, what, what else? Queen f1. King g4, what's next? The only check is knight e5. I go king g5, and then I go to f6. I just run away. I just run away. So maybe knight g1. Okay, let's look at that. King, uh, let's say g4. Queen f3, king g5. The king simply runs away. It's not obvious. It's very low on time. Of course, it is not obvious. But if the answer to the question is, what is the threat? There's no threat. Oh, you can do pretty much anything. So there are a lot of winning moves here for white. I think if I was playing white and I'm a big fan of forcing moves, I would probably choose something like this. Knight d6, pawn takes d6 and queen takes d6. And after queen h2, king g4, there are suddenly no more good checks. The king is running away. And if queen f1, king g4, knight h2, the king just walks forward 
hides behind the F pawn and uh, that would be a win. And uh, knight g1 check, the king just walks forward and just run, just run somewhere there. You'll definitely hide. And then black's king would be totally busted. So I would play knight d6, I think. Uh, maybe black would go knight king a7, but this is, come on, this is uh, not serious. Uh, I think I can capture the pawn. Instead, Wesley played a quiet move. Okay, it's not a quiet move. He created a major, major threat now uh, with queen e4 check. And uh, now the queen seems uh, to be uh, nicely placed. And uh, now... Uh, now the question is... One minute. Black to move and survive. The price is a shirt. A shirt, yes. So the mug is there, uh, the socks, and now the shirt. How do black survive? You would see some irony soon about this move. This move looks good because the queen is defended. Uh, there was uh, big threats and so on. And yet uh, that was an unfortunate decision by uh, Wesley after which Le managed to survive. Okay, so uh, uh, the quiz has ended and the price which would be, what did I say? A shirt goes to Suzel de Silva. Suzel de Silva is the nickname. Uh, there are some uh, arrows there. Maybe I'll, I'll copy it into the chat just to be, uh, just to be safe. Uh, okay, so the way he saved the game, he went knight g1 check. King went to g4. It looks like the king is escaping. It was, the freedom was so close. Queen e2 check. And the problem is the king g5. I hope uh, that Susan de Silva saw it. Knight h3 comes with a fork. The irony is if that queen was anywhere else, the king just walks away. The queen runs into a fork. So I think, uh, and so the game continued king h4. Queen h2, again, king g5 runs into an unfortunate fork, a nice fork with the knight. Knight was on f3, and this is a nice route to win the queen. And that's it. That was the repetition, and Le survived. So instead of queen f4, I think queen f6, queen f8, queen c1, like multiple moves were winning. The only reason it was winning, there is no threat. It doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like there's no threat. There's knight g1, queen h2, <laughs> three checks right there. But uh, apparently there was no threat, and that should have been the clue for Wesley to, uh, uh, to see the fact that uh, he can do pretty much anything now. Okay, so that concludes game number two. And uh, uh, I want to remind you that Leia won the first game, and this was a draw, and Wesley needed, needed a win. Okay, because if Leia wins the match, uh, there would be a tie break. So uh, I'm going to upload the game number three in just a second. Just a second. Yep. Okay. Game number three. Lequan Gliam, Wesley So. D4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, e3. This is what I was talking about. He didn't want to go back to London system, even though he won the game, because he knew he was in trouble out of the opening. He knew, and he didn't have an improvement. Maybe they, these guys have seconds sitting like right uh, somewhere in the next room and between the games telling them what to do. But I, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. Okay, not you don't have to be in the next room, obviously. But... Uh, uh, if I were playing tournament like that, I would I would ask somebody just please give me an improvement on my previous game uh, between the games. Otherwise, it's cheating, right? So, uh, uh, okay. So e3. This is the move he uh, Le used to beat Aronian. He uh, with this move, it's 
it's so, such not a dangerous move at all. Like you block the bishop. So white is saying, I'm going to play bishop d3. I'm guessing b3, bishop b2. I'm just going to play chess. I love this approach, by the way. He says, I don't care about the opening theory. I don't care about advantage. Let's just play some chess. And uh, Aronian went for this line, c5. And West goes for this as well. D takes c5, e6, b4. So uh, Le had several games like this with Aronian, and some of them brought him the victory. And in all those games, uh, Aronian played b6, and after capture, bishop to b4, c3, white ended up with an extra pawn. Uh, these two pawns will disappear, and white has an extra a pawn. Black has very good compensation, but black is playing basically for two results, draw or losing. It's very unlikely that something else is going to happen. And so I think a5 move is an improvement on Le Aronian, even though it's a theoretical position, uh, quite well known. Uh, uh, because Wesley got big advantage out of the opening. I don't know. I would be speculating now, because uh, they both blitzed out moves until a position where Black has big advantage. So how is that possible? Like, why would Le blitz out moves to a position where he's much worse. Why would he do that? The, the only explanation I have is that uh, uh, he was bluffing. That's my, my only explanation that I've got. He was bluffing. He was just saying, yeah, I know what to do here, but maybe he didn't, uh, maybe he forgot or maybe he uh, remembered some idea. Anyway, I like a5 much more. I'm, I'm including the rook and there's no a3, of course, because of capture. So. For white, it's c3, and now a takes b4, c takes b4, and b6. And now if capture happens, that's a big mistake, because bishop takes b4, there is no c3 move. Black wins back a pawn, and black would be better. So white goes bishop b5 check, bishop to d7, bishop d7, knight bd7, developing the knight. Still moving the pawn doesn't work, because bishop b4 comes with a tempo. White would love to go c6 and then support it with b5, but there's no time for that. Bishop takes b4. So uh, the game went a4, b takes c5, and b5. It reminds me of one line in Slav where with colors reversed, where black has such pawns, but in that line, uh, um, white has two bishops for those passed pawns. Here, black doesn't have two bishops for these passed pawns, and yet black has a very good position because those pawns are not going anywhere anytime soon, and this pass on the c file is equally dangerous. Uh, as those two guys uh, right there. So here the move I love by played by Wesley. Not a boom. Yes, the note boom, if I'm pronouncing it, that was the line. But here we have a similarity. And now G5, the, when I saw this move, I was like, what is going on? What kind of move is G5? What kind of move is G5? And that was apparently uh, Wesley's preparation. That was Wesley's preparation. Hold on a second. I forgot that I need to give a quiz. And uh, I, I needed to prepare the hardest one for my course, the World Champions Blunder. But I didn't think this through. So we'll see. Maybe there would be a quiz. Oh. OK. Yeah, the hard quizzes are already back in history in the, this game. And in the other one, I cannot see a good quiz. Maybe we come back to a previous game. We'll see. We'll see how, how we go about it. My bad. Apologies for that. Yeah, I don't have a quiz in the final game either. Hmm. OK, maybe we'll come back to a previous game. Ah, but I already told you everything, what I know. Hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll have three presents now, or maybe I come up with something as we go. I don't know. So G5, I love this move. I love this move. This is Mamediarov style. Mamediarov loves to push pawns G4 G, uh, with white. And uh, uh, the point is, uh, okay, let me... The point is, uh, so this would be a free quiz, so don't worry about it. Uh, knight to uh, to g5, uh, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, start quiz for black. Why did he put the pawn where it could be captured?
Ah, no, I found one very difficult. Uh, yes, uh, the time uh, the time has uh, lots of people passed it, but not everyone. A very typical way uh, to deal with this one is to to go rook g8, attacks the knight, and the pawn on g2 is hanging. So if white insists on defending the knight, you say, no, no, no. You still leave. That goes to f3, now rook takes g2, and now there's an amazing rook. Uh, white, black controls the open file, white is in big trouble. So that uh, was a justification of uh, of uh, of that pawn move. And black is saying, I'm not castling. My king is doing fantastically in the center because I have so many pawns there. And there will be no open file anytime soon uh, in the middle of the board. So I don't need to castle. My rook is going to g8. Almost blitz out by both players, bishop b2. Bishop d6. It was one correspondence game played like this. So I'm guessing they were following that game. And now queen e2, developing the queen. g4, active forcing move. Knight fd2. Queen c7, black develops the queen. Uh, f4. I don't know. I don't like this move. And and yet Le blitz it out and Stockfish doesn't like it. Maybe he has a more powerful engine or maybe he was not using Stockfish. Maybe he was using some other. There's some new engine Ceres or Ceres, which is supposedly much better than Leela. Maybe that, I don't know. But F4, I don't like this move. After G takes F3, White takes with the knight, free bad square and an open file. Uh, E4 was my engine suggestion, but the position is so difficult. I don't know what's going on here. But they all blitzed out moves. F4 takes, knight takes, rook G8, rook to open file. Castles king E7, connecting the rooks. The king feels quite well on E7. And uh, now the improvement for white apparently was the bishop c3 move. It's one weird move. The idea is that next move is a5 and uh, white can launch the pawn uh, b6, uh, push the pawns a little bit further. Instead, knight bd2 was still blitzed out by Lea. Maybe he confused some lines. I really don't know. What I do know that after rook g4, black is much better. There's an open file. All black's pieces are good. This rook is good, putting pressure on both sides. That rook is good. The queen and the bishop are putting pressure. There's an outpost on e4. Black is better, but the position is really, really difficult and uh, dynamic. So white played queen d1 because the pawn was hanging. And now uh, rook a to g8 played by Wesley. Rook f2 defending the pawn. Rook b4, another forcing move. I love this sequence. Knight f1, knight e4, another forcing move. Rook c2, and now there are not too many forcing moves, so he just improved the queen, queen a7. It's a nice move. The queen is putting pressure here. And on this diagonal, because there's a weak pawn on e3, queen to e1. Uh, apparently, Wesley could have just taken the pawn. Just take the pawn. If there's a check, the king just moves back. Uh, okay, the h7 pawn would fall, but it's much more important uh, to remove one of the passers and then maybe the other one would go. So I really don't know why he didn't take the pawn on a4. Uh, he must have had his reasons. Instead, he came back with the knight. I don't like backward moves. I don't like moving pieces back. It's very rarely a good idea. So the game continued. Bishop f6, knight takes f6, rook c to a2, defending the, the pawn, rook g to g4, another forcing move, queen d1, and now this pawn is very well protected and it's very hard to improve black's pieces. So even though they are all very active, it's not clear what you can do. You need to push some pawns, but it doesn't seem like a right time. So he improved the rook, rook g to c4. I never seen rooks like that. There's these rooks, how did they even appear here? Right, that could be the question if if you're if you're uh, uh, looking at this position uh, just like that. How did they appear? There are no open files. What happened? Uh, they went around. So knight d2 attacks uh, the rook, rook c3, rook goes further, rook b1, white tries to exchange some pieces to start pushing the past pawns, c4, very, very difficult stuff. a5, finally those pawns are launching. And now mm, black was better until this or a uh, slightly previous moment. Black is still better actually. Rook takes b1, queen takes b1. Okay. Uh, now, there would be a quiz. I will give two minutes, maybe, or maybe even two fifteen. Best move for black, 
and there was a sequence of moves. Okay, there would be some mistakes in the quiz for white, but to prove a point, uh, it was very difficult uh, to, to find. Black to move, white is clearly ready to push the pawns, but black can create a counterplay. Uh, so, okay, whoever gets this one first will get my World Champions Blunder course um, as a present. Um, because this is a really difficult stuff. I'll give a hint. I'll give a hint. So don't, you have two minutes. Don't click, don't click on moves yet. The queen is about to be cut off and that's a problem. So, uh, but this, this is really, really difficult stuff. Okay, one and a half minutes left. So this was a moment where Wesley could have gotten okay not the win but i really like the underlying idea uh, of uh, how black could have won this one in a classical game uh in a classical game he would he would have figured this out but in blitz or rapid i think it's really really difficult Okay, 30 more seconds, 30 something more seconds. Uh, we already have a winner, but I would wait until the time runs out. Fifteen seconds. 15 seconds. How does the quiz board know my move was a nice try? Uh, nice try is a, a gentle way to say that you're wrong. There's only one correct sequence of moves. That's why uh, this quiz is uh, it's designed that way. So you can try again, but uh, you're, you're not going to be on the winner board. And uh, the winner of my World uh, Champions Blunder course is no time used. I'm putting it in the chat. So the solution is really difficult, really difficult. The queen goes first. The queen doesn't want to be cut off uh, from the game, but who's going to stop the A pawn? And I was analyzing, I was like, who's going to, the pawns are just going. It's really hard to play such a move uh, over the board. And bear in mind, if Wesley loses this one, the match uh, is uh, going to tie break on the spot. Right? So he doesn't want to risk too much. So he wants maybe a draw and then try his chances to win in the last game. So what happens if A6, which turns out to be a big mistake? Black says, yeah, just like I said before, there's a threat of promoting. That's fine. You can have your queen. I'm pushing the center, D4. And if white insists on going A7, black says D takes E3. Turns out that black is equally fast to promote because of this discovered check. So for example, white promotes. Now E takes D2 check, king has to go to H1. And after rook C1, suddenly this queen is hanging, back rank is collapsing, D1 queen is coming, black is winning. That was the correct continuation for, for black. Really, really difficult stuff. Instead, uh, he actually had... Uh, a rook a1 here that's a good question that is a good question let me see it would probably take your queen and then move my knight to g4 that is coming to f2 there's some one or two checks I'm just gonna hide there knight f2 is coming with either smothered mate or at least a promotion yeah, that's it. So, uh, uh, but that's a good question. Thank you for asking it. Uh, so that queen c5, just saying, yeah, you can push your pawns. I'm preparing d4. This is difficult, difficult stuff. The game continued bishop c5, b6, queen to b8, and uh, b7, the pawn is pushed. And now Wesley seizes the initiative one more time. Knight g4, forcing move, attacking the pawn. Okay, it was attacked, attacking it one more time. Okay, g3, knight takes e3 a6 bishop a7 that's what he planned in advance i need my bishop on c5 because even if the pawns are advanced my bishop alone can hold them in many cases king h1 
running away from a discovery, a really difficult match. Rook d3, knight takes e3, rook takes e3, and uh, mm, now Le missed his chance. He played knight f1. It is a forcing move. It is a forcing move, without a doubt. But what did I say previously today about forcing moves? There are different levels of, uh, of uh, forciness of the moves. I'm not sure how to uh, put it in a different term. The most forcing move is the check. Literally, the most forcing move you can do is a check. Your opponent has to drop everything and deal with it. And that was the correct one. And then you do something with your knight or with your rook. And the position remained dynamically very, very unclear. Well, white is, black is one pawn up, but we're not playing in pawns anymore. Um, and next move for white would be rook a1, covering the king. And then maybe rook goes somewhere, I don't know difficult. Instead, he played knight to f1. He attacked uh, the rook, but after rook b3, forcing move, rook b2. I guess he may have blundered this, that the exchange, like exchanging white is doing fine, but he missed this one. Queen e5, counterattack, the queen finally gets out, rook takes b3, c takes b3, and of course the idea is that if queen takes a free pawn, it's a diagonal mate. It's not linear, it's diagonal, I suppose. Yeah, it's a checkmate. So the pawn is poisoned. White had to go knight d2 and the queen e3. Uh, again, knight takes, it's a checkmate. If queen takes, the knight is falling or checkmate in one. So white has to go queen c1 and after b2, the game was over. Queen c7 check, king runs away. Queen f4 check, queen takes, pawn takes, king f5. That was Wesley's plan when he moved the bishop to c5. When was it? Hold on a second. Bishop to c5 was moved 30. And now we are move 44. So he saw it in advance, the idea that even if pawns go a5, b6, b7, my bishop can still handle them. That was the deep idea that uh, Wesley prepared and it worked quite fine. King f4, king d3, king d3, and f5. Uh, the pawns are just going. No one can stop them. That was game number three. Quite an interesting win by Wesley. So the the score was equal. And now he had white pieces. He does just needed a draw in the round number four. He just needed a draw with white pieces. How hard could it be? Because he won the day one yesterday. So he just needed a draw. I don't know what happened. Maybe he got nervous. Uh, we'll see in a second. Uh, let me upload the last game. Mm. No. Load. Yes, there it is. He just needed a draw. And d4, knight f6, c4. Yeah, uh, in most of the... It's very hard. People are struggling to play for win. Usually what they do when, to, when playing for win, they go like g6, bishop g7, a6, b6. Like really nonsensical lines just to get much worse position, but not, get into, not going into theoretical lines where all these top players know how to go to a very secure or, or immediate draw. So in this case, Le played the Banco Gambit. He said Banco. There are no forcing draws there, but this is not a good opening. No top players playing a Banco Gambit on high level at all. Well, now Le is doing that. And especially if White wants a draw. So Wesley chose a very nice line, knight c3, e4, exchanged some pieces. Knight f3, bishop g7, g3, castles king g2, theoretical position. Knight bd7, a4, rook a6, queen e2, development. Although I think queen belongs on c2, but okay, queen a8. Rook a3, rook b8. Now he made one inaccuracy. Apparently there were like two correspondence games, I think. And white won in both of them. Uh, white needed to take care of this pawn. So for example, queen c2 was the right move in this position. Or even b3, apparently. Building a wall like this, it's very hard to put pressure on b3 because white will always have a move like knight b5 or knight d2 at white's disposal. White has big advantage here. Aren't you supposed to play h3 at some point to prevent knight g4, knight e5? That's a very good question. I don't think you have to, because, uh, for example, if black goes knight h4 now, I think white can go like queen e2, and then let's say go h3, knight e5, knight back to d2, and then kick that knight with f4. And uh, yes, sometimes they do it, but uh, you don't have to do it. I agree. Uh, I played a couple of games with Banco Gambit. You don't have to do it. 
going to have to do it. So black finished the development first. And now rook to d1. I don't like this move because there's nothing to do on the d file. Maybe rook e1 I could relate to. But rook d1, not so much. Maybe he was expecting e6. Maybe that was the thing. So he, which is typical for that queen to open up the file. Instead, uh, uh, Lab played very typical maneuver. Knight goes to e8. And now it's already very hard to keep this pawn alive. Because now already bishop takes c3 as a threat. And then rook takes a4. It's a very typical idea for Benko Gambit, by the way, to drop that great bishop and win back the pawn. And very often f6 covers all the dark squares and black has a good position. And now Wesley, I don't know, he just collapsed apparently. I don't know what happened. He decided to give up the pawn with knight b5. And I would at least wait for, for that bishop and take with the pawn and maybe hope for c4 and open the diagonal. But I, do, I cannot understand. Maybe, maybe he answered the question in a post-game uh, uh, interview. Mm, I, I'm sure he did, but uh, I, I am not aware of what was his intentions. Knight b5, black takes the pawn for free, and white is in huge trouble. Queen c2, rook takes a3, knight takes a3. The reason why white is in huge trouble is, uh, is that, well, now black is not one pawn down, and black has much better pawn structure. This pawn on b2 constantly needs protection. White's pieces are passive. The bishop on c1 is passive. Bishop on g7 is a monster bishop. There are multiple weak squares in white's position, b3, b4, d4. And there are zero weak squares in black's position. Or maybe c4 would be one. White is in big trouble. So we are very close to tie breaks. Knight c7, knight is coming. Knight c4. Queen a2, the queen is coming. Bishop g5. Rook b4 with a tempo. Rook c1. Bishop f6 played by left. Uh, bishop h4. h4 was played. So white is saying if you want to take, maybe... A... Yeah, actually, black could have taken. But knight b5, improving the knight. A apparently, white could have played rook bishop back to d2, attacking the rook. And it's not easy to, to do anything about that. Uh, rook a4, rook b3 are the two moves. Why didn't I analyze rook b4, rook a4? What's wrong with rook a4? Oh, knight a3. Yauza. The, the, the rook and the knight are attacked. And that's the win. That's why rook a4 seems to be bad. And on rook b3, white could play rook a1, queen a1, queen b3, and get some counterplay down the b file. Instead, Wesley missed the chance and took the bishop. Knight takes f6, queen e2. So white is basically standing like this, like in boxing match, you stand like this, uh, tied to the ropes. Uh, there are punches coming from everywhere. e4 needs protection, b2 needs protection. E4, uh, b2, e4, c4, all these pieces and pawns need protection. And what is white attacking? Nothing, because there is no weakness in black's position whatsoever. White is in uh, big uh, trouble here. So how did Wesley survive? King g7, black has all the time in the world, just improves the king because white has no uh, active counterplay, uh, except maybe e5. Uh, but it doesn't seem to work because the pawn on d5 is hanging. But I'm sure both of them calculated e5 on every move. Rook c2, queen b3, slight improvement of the queen. Knight a5, queen a4, knight back to c4. Clearly, Wesley's okay with the draw. Then he would win the match. And now I think the improvement would be now Le played. Uh, Quite a weird move, queen to a8. I'm guessing he was preparing e6. Uh, but I don't believe in this idea. I just need to move my king somewhere, I don't know, into h3. And then on takes, takes, hit it with e5. So queen a8, I'm not a fan of this move. I'm a fan of forcing straightforward moves. And there was one here available for him to get very big advantage. Just go to d4. Knight goes to d4. Knight takes d4. Pawn takes d4. And then now we have a passer. And uh, okay, maybe and there is a threat. Knight takes e4 is a threat. So if queen takes, we take on c4. White has to go e5, and now black takes on e5. If knight takes e5, black goes queen b3, and then the pawn on d5 would fall, and white would be in big, big trouble here. So I like this straightforward, like cl clarifies the situation. I'm gonna do this, this, and this. What are you going to do about that? I'm threatening knight e4, I'm threatening queen b3, followed by d3. I have a passer now. What have you got? At least that would be my uh, train of thought if I were in, in uh, uh, Quan Guillaume's situation. Queen a8, rook d2. I'm guessing he didn't like e5. Oh, maybe that's a prophylactics against e5. 
that could be a reasonable explanation. Queen a8, rook d2, h6, prophylactic move, and now Wesley hits with d5. Knight takes d5, e takes d6, and this was the last moment where Le had a chance to get advantage. Uh, yeah, it doesn't count as a quiz because there are multiple solutions, so I will not give a quiz here. Oh, we can have a quiz for fun. Okay. Uh, even if it's not perfect, we can have a quiz. Just a second. One minute quiz. Best, which capture would you choose for black? You can capture with a pawn or you can capture with the knight. Which one is it? Surprisingly big amount of people guessed uh, all even the difficult ones. I wonder if that's a coincidence. Are you that good? Or maybe there's an extra help provided. I don't know. No more prizes today. I gave all the prizes available. Okay, so there are five correct answers. Uh, and uh, the correct answer goes like this. Knight takes d6. Knight takes d6. E takes d6. Uh, I guess there was a check on e5, but then black has f6, I'm afraid. So uh, capture, capture. I think the reason Lad didn't want to go there because it doesn't seem... Obviously, nobody finds without remembering commentary or analysis during the game. Okay. Uh, that makes sense, uh, Erdnus Carlson. Uh, I think during the game he may have thought that, okay, this pawn on d6 is not going to be alive, for example, after queen d1, or actually queen d3 as well, uh, knight f6, rook d6. Maybe he stopped here because rook d2 looks quite dangerous. Uh, there are some problems here. Uh, how do I use them? I don't know, rook d8, queen d6. Uh, the correct move here is queen b7 which is difficult. I don't understand this move, to be honest. So, uh, so I'm guessing, yeah, to see it in one minute is impossible. So probably uh, people are guessing it using uh, analysis or help or because queen b7 is why? And then take on b2? I don't know. Rook d8 doesn't come with a tempo. I, that, I guess that's the difference. And uh, yeah, black would have big advantage here. Instead, he took e takes d6, and maybe he overlooked the fact that after knight takes d6, there would be, if knight d6, there would be queen e5 check, and white is like taking one knight or the other. And after that, Wesley did not miss his chance. Knight d6, knight d4, he went queen e4, queen c6, knight takes f7, very precise move, using the fact that there's fork is coming, and now black has to be careful. Knight takes f3, queen takes f3, white has an extra pawn, and the game ended in a draw with, uh, after knight f4, g takes f4, queen f3, king f3, king f7, rook d5, rook d2, king e4, rook d2, rook c5, rook f2, and they agreed for a draw after the repetition, which made Wesley so, I would say, a fully deserved winner of this tournament because the first game that he lost, uh, he was not supposed to lose it. He had a draw, he had a win, he had a draw. And uh, although, but Lequan Gliam created lots of practical problems for him. Till the very end, it was not clear whether the match is going to end with a tie break or no. And uh, that almost concludes our lesson today. And uh, congratulations to Wesley. So second place, Lequan Gliam, third place, Vladislav Artemyev, and place number four, Levon Aronian. Given the fact that he started it's a very tournament with terrible loss in the winning position and then starting with half a point out of three, he recovered and he went to semifinals, which is amazing uh, on its own. And uh, my name is Mikhail Oleksienko. I'm a chess author for Chessable. Check out my courses. And there was one free course, World Champions Blunder, for I forgot the nickname. Uh, 
how can I find your classroom? Again, this is not my classroom. This is a, a classroom specifically designed for this tournament. Uh, I'm new to these classroom things. Uh, maybe I would be doing group lessons in the future because I really like the, uh, uh, the whole setup and the fact that I can see my students and we can talk without any extra help. No Skype, no Zoom, nothing is required, which is amazing. I can see, we can talk, there are quizzes. Uh, I, I love it. So thank you all for watching. That concludes uh, our lesson. Out of curiosity, where could we find your published work in mathematics? Oh my God, that was 10 years ago. I can barely even remember my thesis. Uh, <laughs> uh, I had some English uh, papers, but they I have not in PDF, so yeah. It's not that easy, easy to find. I left mathematics behind uh, many, many years ago. Uh, but thank you for your question. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, take good care and uh, goodbye.